<laughs> oh no, what? Why? Why? Hello? You broke it. No, I did. I said, there it is. Oh, okay. There we go. Mahogany, yes. I still got to say uh, Alabama Jakes is the best one that you came up with. It, it is the best one I've done. <laughs> What's wrong, Shiver? These are unfripping out. Well, you spelled relay station really badly this week. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> Just turn off the text. Done. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Oh, yeah, you fucked up my camera angle, so I'm going to... David, do you have do you have a, a a PC cam right now? Oh my god. Is it this way? Is it... I don't I don't have the moose. Oh it was oh yeah, it was on your other computer. Yeah, everything was on my other PC. So I was like, you know what? It's there. Yeah. Um uh, I want to try. Why is it, man? Nothing is working right now. Okay, just nothing is working for me. I can't. What is working? What the chat? What's up, chat? Hello, chat. I can't get the bot working. I can't get to Twitter to tweet. We don't need the bot. You should tweet though. I'm trying to. <laughs> We're doing well, Square Peg. We're we're trying. David still hasn't set up everything from uh, from moving uh, computers here. Is it that? Uh, I literally don't know what's going on. <laughs> Nothing is. Everything is. Everything is horrible. Fine. Welcome to the show, everybody. Uh, in case you don't know what this is, this is a Star Citizen podcast. This the the podcast that is specifically about Star Citizen, unlike the other one that we have, which is specifically not about Star Citizen. It's true. Yeah. Uh, yep. Just passwords. started. Boys and girls, our podcast is at the same time every week. If you want to know if that changes, please join us on Discord. Discord.gg slash Relay SC. Wow. Uh, yeah, Philostin, it's it's pretty bad. And deepest apologies for that. Um, please turn on as many ad blocks as you can. We don't make any money from it, so... Just I there's, shut it down, dude. There's a large part of me that wants to just ditch Twitch entirely. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get to that point at some point. Hi, Bruce Serena. Go, go you subscribe to too much. YouTube, maybe? I don't know. What's the threes of people that watch YouTube streams? Yeah. I mean, Twitch is... Doing shitty with the the DMCA's. They're doing crappy with. I mean, pre roll no better on that front. So pre roll yeah, and I mean, mid roll. YouTube is terrible for that. YouTube, right? If you accidentally have three minutes of music in the background, three minutes, thirty seconds of music in the background, and you did a seven hour stream, they're like, nah. And you're like, fucking really? Oh my goodness! Fucking really? Coming for you. It's coming at you. I'm afraid. <laughs> oh um, yeah, okay. So I can't log into the Twitter. <laughs> I can't get the bot working. What's <laughs> Dolbeck? Oh, jeez. He's... <laughs> You know what? At least he's got a shirt on. There he goes. I was thinking at least he's got pants on. There he goes. <laughs> he's gone. It's a wild, a wild Dolbach. Oh, oh my goodness. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> welcome to uh, the Relay Station. Welcome to the show. 
I don't know God. how to blink SOS. <laughs> um, yeah. What happened in Star Citizen this week? David? One second. I got. There is something I got to do. So oh. occupy for a second. This is why we have the, the show before. This is why we start the call 30 minutes early. I mean, oh, and the link, I can't even find the damn link. To what? The, the form. The questions oh, form. Got that Jesus somewhere. fucking. <laughs> <laughs> right. Come on, man. It's like you've never done this before. Thanks you know what? To the questions. I was starting to do really well. No, you weren't. There's a link to the uh, <laughs> spreadsheet with the actual questions itself. I don't know why everything's broken this week. It just is. I'm sorry. I'm good. sorry that everything's broken this week. Okay? That PC uh, does not need more RGB, dude. That is too much RGB. Oh my god, it's Zane. Hey, Zane. Hey, Zane. Ask Zane! Here. Because look, up, you buddy? know what this, Welcome you back. know what the PC Doesn't needs right now? Know how to What's use that? a bot. I'm gonna show you what the PC needs right now. Dead air, apparently. Of course, it's not loading either. What on 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 the base that's currently on the hiatus, but usually on <laughs> a day. Wow, everything. Ev I'm frozen now. No, he's fine. I'm no, but I'm I'm frozen in uh Oh. God. This is this is a disaster. Why? Why because is this happening? You started the call like 10 minutes before we went live is why. <laughs> oh, I am frozen too. There, I'm back. Not me. I'm the I'm the only yeah. real boy here. And Shiver's back. Okay. I'm the only real boy. All right. Hey. I'm not going to try and do anything else because anything I touch is breaking. Yeah. Oh, and the PC is frozen. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I don't even know why Priorities. it's frozen. Priorities. Oh. <laughs> Uh, okay, so uh, yeah, what? Uh, we have a podcast, I believe. I don't know what those are. I don't know what a podcast is. Okay. Oh, good lord. Let's let's see what happened this week inside what Star Citizen. Now Jake's frozen. <laughs> oh. Okay. All right. So you're unfrozen. So one. I'm very excited for refining. It looks very, very in depth, about as in depth as I expected it to be, which is great. Um, I so um, after having uh, messed around with the uh, the Star Runner yesterday, yeah, um, I don't know how I feel about the tiny little touch screens. Okay. They're hard to, to push. You have to put your cursor right the heck on the button uh, in order to push that button. Um, there's th there's always been... Like, I've had a problem with the UI in Star Citizen for a long time, and it's been that it's very exact. Uh, lots of UIs in games normally come down to so, a big button to press, right? Like, you press... You, you look at it and you click F to press the button to call the elevator or you press yeah. F to the, the problem is in Star Citizen these buttons usually have multiple options yes so they have to they have to accommodate for that um, I think honestly I think they could solve the problem if they made the panels a little bit bigger um, but um, but yeah um, uh, 
So I will say I love is, the look of this uh, this UI. Like the the refining UI good. is glorious. Yeah. Um, and I I really like that you can like leave and come back to a refining job like this. Um, you can you can choose to pull what has been refined quickly at, at the sacrifice of the stuff that's in there. Like it, it's giving it's giving you a lot of choice, which which is huge. Um, also, you can shop around, uh, which yeah. is which is pretty cool. Um, and they and they give you good reason to shop around, and it's very clear why you should shop around, um, which is which is important. It's it's not just like oh, do they have a better price right now? It's like oh no, this refinery is really good at doing this particular ore. I'm gonna go there to refine this ore that I have. Things like that. I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited. Um, sure. What do you think of the uh, the refining stuff? I mean, it's one of those things that I might do once, twice, just because it's not my sort of gameplay. But I, I love the depth to it. I love the fact that people who are going to be doing this sort of thing are going to be having an interesting set of scenarios and things to follow through. I, of course, the graphics look amazing. The effects on it look amazing. And I would probably just use it just to, you know, see how long the manufacturing line I can walk along, just see it go and have um Wait, I love that I love the my head. Ready? Here here's the here's the dick and balls. There it is. Yeah, it, it, they they cut, cut they just <laughs> cut away from it, I know. <laughs> oh I love it. Thanks, CIG. We saw, we know what you did. Yeah. Everyone. I mean, I mean it, Cause like as soon as I saw that the 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 thing going, it's like I wonder how soon it's going to be until people. Oh right, they're they're doing it. It's already happening. Okay, cool. Yep. Do you Got think? It. Do you think they meant to do that, or do you think it was a cock up? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah, the refining stuff looks cool. I don't know what yeah. else to say about it. It's uh, um, it's one of those. So they they did say about... that they're still they're still uh, you know fine tuning time and amounts and everything, but yeah, uh, I do hope it so... takes a while, and I think that that this will also be the benefit of having a ship that can self refine. Will be not having to find one of these stations and sit there for yep. time and you can just dump that pure or off yeah and it's done um, i mean the, the obvious downside to doing it on a ship that you own would be it may probably won't specialize in doing a particular or it just right everything is a flat rate yeah yeah but Which you might be able off. but you might be able to sit there and refine have someone in the back doing some refining while someone's mining and then you can just ship it all out at once rather than having to do um, multi-step process you can now sure you also forget that uh star citizen's all about tuning and overclocking and components and things like that so you could very well specialize your ship to refine a particular type of ore that's which, true which would give players incentive to come to you to refine it also look at those sparks yep it looks good like the the oh it, it's um, it's real pretty. Yeah, Demon Souls has very similar looking particle effects, and it's it's good. Yeah, but do the rag dolls still rag doll, and then as you walk over them, they like flip out and no. tumble all. Ah, oh, that was one of the best parts of, they do of rag Dark Souls. Doll, um, <laughs> um, so I want to talk about the the Star Runner for a second because it has one of the coolest things in the world in it that they didn't have to do but I'm so happy that they did um so there's there's a series of like they're, they're Jeffrey's series tubes. of tubes yes they're, they're oh, okay. 100% cool. Jeffrey's tubes like there, there's no question you crawl through them to fix engineering type problems in your ship they are Jeffrey's tubes um now there's also storage places inside those Jeffrey's tubes. Good. Uh, for smuggling. 
now here's the thing though uh this is star citizens uh uh millennium falcon yes the star runner everybody pretty much yeah. is in agreement that this is the the millennium falcon. Is, is it that big yes oh i didn't know that i, th- I always yes. thought it was smaller it's huge <laughs> All right. It, I thought it, it was only small as well until deck. I saw it in game. Um, it only has a single deck, but um, but yeah, um, the the cargo base sits a little bit lower than the rest of the ship, but but yeah. Um, so in in this ship is uh, a chess table. Uh, with fully physicsed and pickupable chess pieces, you can play chess. Uh, in fact, last night on Paul's stream, Paul and Diabolus played chess while we were flying to our destination. Nice. It works. 100%. That's good. I like that. Um, now, here's the thing. Here, There's something unbelievable that CIG has done, and it is my favorite thing in the world. There I is, do have a Mercury Star Runner. So, the the chess table... In the Mercury Star Runner is in like a kitchen type area, right? Like a kind of a mess. Yeah. There's a couch. There's a bit, it's, so it's pretty big. Like it sits in the middle of of that room, the chess table. Um, and then there's like a like a countertop with like sinks and kitchen stuff and all that. Yeah. There's, um, so there's a coaster. There there's several coasters on the on the countertop. Yeah. There's a specific coaster where. If you pick up the white queen from the chess table yeah, and you place it on that coaster, the chess table shifts to the left and there is a smuggling compartment underneath the chess table. Now, that is really, really cool, but it needs to be that the captain of the, the owner of the ship can customize that however they want because like, if everyone knows chess piece yeah yeah like I like agree. let let me set my chess piece let me choose which chess piece it is that unlocks and or which coaster it could be any object like yeah like um but but that a, having a that specific glass for example. yeah having that in as a or like a pico statue like whatever it may be but having that functionality it's nuts. That's cool. It's nuts, dude. And it blew my mind the first time I saw it. Because Diablo cool. literally picked up the piece, placed it, and then the table moves. I'm like, no way. <laughs> what is happening? You can fit in there and close it also. So you can hide there when yes. you're under attack. Yes. <sighs> if you're playing chess with Dolvac, it's always a good <laughs> idea to let the Dolvac win. <laughs> yes. Otherwise, it'll pull off your arms. Are we gonna me. get? Are we gonna get he a DMC? Me. Are we gonna get a DMC? A. Uh... That's not how Can't DMC works. DMC. Yeah. God. It's <laughs> not how Maybe it works. If I yet. could produce a perfect <laughs> Chewbacca <laughs> sound. I actually or had like an R2, steak like a the other <laughs> day. I had that Wookie sounds more like day. Wookie steak. Bit chewy. Yeah, bit chewy. <sighs> okay, we're moving on now. Yes. Uh, by the way, if uh, small side note that is unrelated to Star Citizen, if y'all aren't watching The Mandalorian right now, uh, don't good Lord. I ju- I we just watched episode one and two. Oh. Episode. I'm sorry, but no. David, you've seen show that Rebels and banned. Clone Wars, right? What's that? You've seen Rebels and Clone Wars, right? Yeah. It's all... I I really liked that uh, uh, the guy's um, speeder was an old pod racer it's, engine. No. It's, not just any pod no, racer I know. engine. It's Anakin's pod racer engine. I know. It's because amazing. Because that pod racer was custom built. Anakin built that thing from scratch. 
How did he so, end up with Anakin's pod racer engine, though? He left it on the planet. <laughs> Somebody probably sold it. <sighs> and you know the, what? It pro- no, no, no. Anakin sold it before he left. Yeah. He, he said, hey, I sold the pod. Here's a bunch of money, Mom. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think that show needs to be banned because it promotes genocide. Yeah. Look, he only ate three eggs, and it wasn't genocide. It was um, familiacide. No, no, I'm sorry, Eris. You're wrong. What, I, they I saw the this last... on Twitter from several single mums who have got nothing better to do with their time. They weren't the last of their species. They were the last of their family. There's a difference. If a family line dies out, that's not genocide. Are we, it's... Are we, ta- are we talking about slurping up them eggs? Yeah. Is that what we're talking about? Yeah. It's fine. So, first of all, they weren't <laughs> fertilized. So, <laughs> it's like eating a chicken egg. <laughs> I'm sorry, but the vegan community found it very offensive. <laughs> and it took okay, them I, their I entire strength it was and 20 minutes to type time. out, <laughs> I'm offended. No, he only, I counted, I counted, he only ate eggs three times. Still, okay, I think the last one was where I was like, all right. Just, the last one I was too it. much. The yeah. last one was like, okay, where did he get the that The second egg? one was funny because it was like, oh, he got it again. The, that the third rascal. one was a bit much. The third one, it's like, where did he even get that egg from, yeah. right? Like, Yeah. But I'm telling you right now, watch episode three. Those of you who have watched Clone Wars and Rebels, have been just utterly vindicated that you are a big Star Wars nerd because they're like, hey, you in the audience that has watched all of these shows, this one's for you. This particular episode. Also, if you've watched The Wretched Hive, the character that one of the main characters uh, in that show makes an appearance in this episode of The Mandalorian. Thank you, Dave Filoni. You have healed my soul. That, that's all I gotta say. So, when Baby Yoda took those eggs, does that mean that he poached them? Literally, yes. In fact, yes. <sighs> <sighs> is, it, is it technically caviar what he was eating? Yes. Oh no, they're frogs. Never mind. Never mind. Anyway, okay. Uh, back to Star Citizen. I guess uh, so. <laughs> zero scopes, dude. I'm very hyped for this. It's cool. Uh, I'm honestly, I'm less hyped for the ability to zero scopes as I am for uh, lots of the weather effects happening on the rifles that was shown. Like that. Uh, yeah. Uh, we're dropping frames pretty bad. We are. Yeah. I'm not I'm not showing any dropped. Twatch has been a bit twatchy lately. But the adverts work perfectly. It's strange that. Oh no, now it's now it's going up. I don't know why. I got nothing. Certainly not my We're CPU back. having any trouble. It's only at twelve percent. We're back. Yeah, it, uh, it, it's not on my end this time. This new PC makes it not on my end. Well, it could be your internet. Uh, it, Drop frames is packet loss. So. Could be the internet. Yeah. But. Yeah. Well, no, I, I really like this. Um, again, I still. I don't know. Zero to 2,000. Yeah, yeah, it's it'll it's make cool. You whiff too. Um, yeah. So so it takes some skill also. Like it's not the the cheat snipe button. Um, you have you have to precisely aim that zero, in order for for it to land the shot. Because if you don't, you're just gonna zing that bullet right over his head, and then they're gonna be alerted that you missed. Um. So yeah, no, hundred percent. It makes complete sense for this game. I do enjoy these big sweeping panoramic shots they did for this segment. It just looks extremely good. 
um they they did a very nice depth of field effect also good job cig so there's one thing i find really interesting about this because i have for God, decades um yeah like two decades jeez uh pretty much mostly played as a sniper in first person shooters now one of the problems with a sniper in fps is there's there's basically two ways that sniper rifles work in fps one is is in something like counter-strike where uh it's twitch right like you have to it's bolt action but but it's Blam. but it's but you're you're it's bolt action in short spaces right like it's you have to twitch and get ahead like it's well, that's it's just, that's just the nature of counter strike specifically but it's it's i'm talking about the ranges like even in something like battlefield you've got a a larger range but it's still not like now, there's see see Bree serena if if you don't have it, that's what that's what I was saying. So the auto zero thing is easy if you're good because you need to land that aim exactly right. And they can't move while you're aiming. These are stationary targets. He's, yeah. he's shooting at right now. So everything they're shooting here is not mobile, which. Yeah. The, so if they're moving, that's going to be a heck of a lot harder. And if you don't like dial it in exactly right, you're going to miss. Now, two things that are wrong with this. One, uh, why can't you see anything outside of the scope? And there is a max distance also. It's, it's, it's two kilometers. Like outside of the scope is all black, which I don't like. Uh, I'd no, like that to... There's a gameplay reason for that, I would guess. Or there's a technical reason. I or can't imagine the technical reason concept. being true. Yeah. But I mean, gameplay wise, people like you and I, Ace, who have got a 21 by 9 it's a little bit cheaty if we've got focus depth of field. on the um, uh, true on the target, but we can also see a wider visual range than someone on a normal monitor. So it's oh. a little bit hacky, cheaty. But so sucks, just sucks. Use depth of field for that. Yeah, that's, a, that's, an that's easy also that, that's true. Um, but I also have a feeling that not every single scope will have auto. Um, auto range finding yeah yeah one you need the scope for it two you definitely have to aim and three Bruce is right you do have to lead your targets if they're in motion and yeah it and i'm it would be wild if they gave you lead pips that'd be crazy um, I, i'm sure there will be yeah uh guns and scopes that that can and will yeah. right like yeah but it's but it's going to be what, the tech and what what I'm saying is 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 in in this demonstration of this tech, um, in this demonstration of this tech, none of the targets are moving. Yeah. So, it looks really easy because they are not moving. If you if they are if a, a target is stationary, it should be easy to hit them with a sniper rifle. Yeah. Full stop. It should be extremely easy to make that. Th the range that Star Citizen works at, though, is going to make sniping really interesting. It's going to be wild, dude. I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm actually kind of excited for it. I um, am, too. Normally, most games don't have that kind of range, right? Yeah. You, as a sniper, you'll get... I, I can still remember one of the battlefields. Um, there was one... There was one or two, like heavy machine guns that the first shot coming from it was always directly center. Yep. So people would actually like, there was no reason to use a sniper rifle. People would just snipe with the machine gun. Cause you were never at a range that you couldn't see with the, the machine gun scope and you'd get right on target on the first shot with it. So you just, shot once and then shot once and then shot and you were fine right like it was the range here is such that i mean a sniper could sit a thousand meters away and what are you going to do yeah, about see, it look at that his range was off 
on the zero by five meters and he missed. Yeah. Uh, ways to defend against it, uh, run in a serpentine. Yeah, don't stand still. <laughs> run away. Um, um, yeah, I mean, that's the thing is, like, if a sniper gets the drop on you and you're just blissfully unaware and they take that shot, that's it. Yeah. Like, um, and, and I do think we're, especially with things like settlements and stuff like that, we are going to have sensors that, 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 <laughs> take that into consideration um too like so actually a couple weeks ago they were talking about this um there are upgraded sensor tech that has different modes depending on how loud you want to be yeah so like there's like the cross section scanning like all, all of those different ones like you you would be able to see something if it was if you had line of sight but if there was an asteroid in between you and that ship it wouldn't show up but and and so the the scanning tech is there. They're they're building that. So I think they'll absolutely, absolutely um, have something like that for on foot. Um, Shiver, any thoughts? I mean, you've got a few natural defenses as well. Um, walking around a particularly dark planet, using plants, objects as cover, as Jake has mentioned as well. But th things like that, it's you're going to have to just not rely on the scope. You're going to have to go into like see if you can get predator vision or something like that. It's got a lot of lead on to it as well. I mean, this is literally just proof of concept, so it's just got to make sure that actually zooming in is going to work. Yep. One thing that that I... And th this is something that Chris Roberts has mentioned repeatedly throughout the development of Star Citizen that I think it's important not to forget. Um... <laughs> Bigger vehicles could have been no. I'm I'm sticking with your first message, Boston. Bigger v vehicles could have better seniors. <laughs> it's important to remember that throughout the entire development of, of Star Citizen, Chris Roberts has repeatedly said that skill matters more. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, you know what? If there's someone that's really good at sniping, there is no they balance be able to for that. Pop you in the face. They'll yeah. pop you. That's, it's, it's not, it's not designed to be a balanced game. It's designed to have some balance, but it's not going to be balanced. What, what are you talking about? Sniper rifle is end game content. Once you've got the sniper rifle, you've completed the game. Yep. You better shut it off at that point. No, no. I'm, yeah. That's why, I, why do you think I paid five bucks up front to get one? Get a refund. And that's, that. the, that's the point. Yeah, you, you bought already bought the top end of the game so there's no point in you playing it no i've, I've already quit i uh, just light 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 your computer just reach up here just we just light that's it it's yeah, just the, the great it. the great thing about uh star citizen being in development every single year is at the end of the year when i make my list of like games i've completed this year star citizen's there every single year because i've 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 beaten it all every year yep yep um <laughs> yeah Okay, okay. Uh, Pico? Yep, Pico is in the verse. Look at him. Look at that sweet boy. I, I do want the Pico ball. I, w I want the Pico ball more than I want a stuffed Pico. <laughs> I like the Pico ball because of how ridiculous it is yeah i, I think the craftsmanship i gotta say jared went all out on that pico ball do you think he's going Very a little well bit insane with the whole lockdown thing yeah um no actually <laughs> that i segment don't was so good I, the, the halloween one say, yeah yeah so good oh jared it was hey jared if, if you can hear me somehow right now Please don't ever stop the Hab of Horrors. Please don't ever stop. It's I, so good. More important it's than so that. so funny. More important than that, never stop having fun. Yeah. Like, one of the, the things that has, has made, or that, that really stuck me with following Star Citizen at, right at the beginning was... They're having a great time over there, man. Yeah. <laughs> It was, it was, honestly, it was, uh, 
reverse the verse with them just hanging out and having fun and you felt like you were part of that right like it was just never never stop having fun cig yep. uh but also also keep in mind no more christmas live stream that can't happen just again stop it just no the, that that it. it can't happen again that yeah <laughs> I'm yeah. sure I'm sure they're happy to to go on break <laughs> slightly earlier without a deadline at the end of the year. Um, yeah. Well, that's yeah. the uh that's the the video the content, content we had of the week. Yeah. Um has anyone asked any questions, I wonder? No. Cuz you've only got a little bit to get some questions in and then we're going to have to answer them. Um um there was a man in Paul's stream yesterday. I just was reminded of this because I knew you were about to say, answer question, ask questions, or I'll sing. So yeah. there was a man whose whose name was spelled G E E Sharp. That was his username. All right. So I was like, man. So and I was like, do you stream? And he's like, no. And I'm like, well, if you ever did, your sub alert should just be G Sharp. Did that joke work or did it fall a bit flat? Uh, it it fell a bit flat. Oh, oh God! <laughs> Why? That's that's a minor change. Should that really struck a chord with me. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh my. We're by the oh way, man. for those not musically inclined, G sharp and A flat are the same note. We're um we're almost at the end of the year, aren't we? We are. Uh IAE starts It's twenty twenty. It's gonna last another five years until we're at the end of this year. <laughs> Oh, like we're almost Lord. at the end. It's almost it's almost uh time for and and god I hope they all take rests this year. Um for CIG's break? Yeah. Yeah. Oh no, they do. Uh they go on break start like they they start phasing everything down at a, on like the 20th or 21st, I, I know but like every year they try and release something somewhere between the 10th and the 20th and oh, it invariably course. is horribly broken so there are people that are spending their holidays in the office but and it's like those, don't but those stop. people also still get that break <laughs> just so yeah it's know. just i know but like it's delayed a little bit do there is no office for them to go to this year so yep, it's true that's true I mean, yeah, honestly, right. this, this is this is one year where you can't go to an office, you can't really go to visit family, you can't go do anything, and uh, you yeah. really, really shouldn't if you have any plans on doing that. Uh, that don't. So cool, like they like CIG still cranking away at Star Citizen. They've got an in-game event coming up this week. There's new ships, there's new content, there's new everything. It's it's still coming as if nothing ever changed, really. It, so all I know... More than 600 people working from home right now. All I know is I, I work for uh, the government. And they've started saying, uh, expect this to remain the status quo even after COVID. Because... For decades, everyone thought that people staying home and working from home... Well, there were two things. They thought it would be a loss of productivity. Right? Spoiler. Nah. It's not. People do if, the if work. If you have a loss of productivity, those workers are bad and you should get rid of them. Well, they weren't doing the work in the first place. At work. Right. Like, like right. there were ways to ignore it there, too. But it's... Productivity is maintaining is the same or even going up in some cases. Morale has gone up even in a pandemic, and building costs. Man, do you know much how There's much CIG? Downside, so expensive. What's the downside? Oh, there is 
I was reading about this dude who's run, who's set up a new kind of business where it actually monitors people working from home. And oh. personally, I dislike that immensely. That yeah. I mean, I, I know a company never trusts its employees at all, because why would a company employee give you money to work and then say, no, I don't trust you one so fucking bit. Yeah. But there's I, that crosses a line, in my opinion, where they are literally basically spying on you in your own home. But yeah, I can understand their point of view to, to monitor your productivity, but that's too far. Yeah, I, I mean, I wouldn't sign on to that. I'd, I'd leave and go find another job. I like yeah. it. Well, yeah, it while might become I the was, norm, though. While I was interviewing, that's like one of the big questions I have. If, if it was a remote position, I'm like, um, I, I actually just straight up asked the person interviewing me, uh, how much do you trust your employees? Yeah. Um, uh, what 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 measures do you have in place to make sure your employees are doing the work they need to be doing? And if their answer is anything more than we don't, <laughs> uh, well, no. Like there's there are measures that are completely acceptable. I honestly, it's ours is we just have a morning meeting every day. Or like or, to make sure people are at work, or a, a Slack thing where you your your project yeah. is there and you've got a deadline and you you work towards it, right? And yeah. Are you meeting There's your no deadline? Difference. If, if Thanks for the follow, Tracer. It's it's yeah, but but I mean we are seeing, and especially at the beginning of the pandemic, it was worse. There was a definite slowdown that hit a lot of of studios, not just CIG, but it hit a lot of places. Uh, lots of games were delayed. Uh, lots of games weren't delayed and should have been. Um, Two Avengers. Avengers. It's, um, but it you know it's it's good to see that. CIG are soldiering on, right? Stuff's still mm -hmm. getting done. It's still looking good, and it's it's looking from the more and more like a I game. To, every they have no plans to go back into the office anytime soon. So yeah, well, that's that's like my work. There's there are no plans because it's everything's working. Yep. Uh, hey, Carrie, how's it going? Um, questions. We got questions? Oh, yeah, it's time for questions. We got yeah, three questions, is. four questions. Okay, here we go. Bryce Serena asks, uh, what do you think of streamers getting access to the MSR before owners and uh, uh, ETF not fully right testing now. it? They sh they're, they're stress testing it. <laughs> uh, in this particular instance of the PTU, yeah, you need to limit that access as of right now because people will just trash all over it. I... Honestly, I don't mind streamers getting early access. They are, um, there yeah, are, th there's a couple, there's a couple kinds of people that put time into the game consistently and streamers are one of the, that groups. Like, mm -hmm. and if you also put in that much time into the game, odds are you are very much likely to be on in the Evocati group, which is yep. not a small group anymore. So that also means you have access to it. So I, the people, the people who they're, they're giving, they're giving access to a ship that is definitely not finished. I want to stress that because who boy there, I've fallen through that ship three times in the four hours that I was playing with it. Um, I I also don't mind and, them giving like so CIG has almost no advertising budget and that's always been a really good thing and they've advertised instead through streamers um but that's also meant that lots of streamers have to buy lots of ships yep and it means that those streamers will face accusations of being whales will face accusations of being paid by cig will face all sorts of things if cig just say look you get the ship you can test it you can show it off i'd rather that this is cig's advertising budget yep is they they take the the most passionate streamers who are like streaming the game and have access and may or may not have access to that ship most of them probably own it first of all um, but second of all, the ones who don't that they're, they're spending nothing. Yeah. It's, nothing it, it's, no, sorry, go ahead. Shiver. 
But if you look at it from outside perspective, if you look at it from just a regular back perspective, you don't realise that these streamers are the advertisement. You don't realise that these streamers are pumping in that money. And you can quite easily just sit there and say, well, he's only got it because he's streaming and he's not even testing it. But it, like you both point out, it's not a simple matter of black it's and white. It's the reality of the situation that people well, do have to do so, have to take into yeah, account. You, well, and it's, it's so the reality. I understand issue. why someone sitting there watching it feels a bit shitty about it. But once you explain it, and but the then they, they have not everyone gets the explanation. And the problem is, and they haven't been paying attention because if there's one thing that's being done now by companies, they are shifting a lot of their advertisement over to Twitch streamers. They give Twitch streamers free content, free games, free anything because that's where people people more often than no, not I, now. Yeah. No, Eris. No, no, Eris. I I think streamers should pay the developers to stream their game. <laughs> I mean, you, man, he hasn't tweeted since he said that either. <laughs> yeah. Um, no. So, so here's the thing. It, now, I would be a hundred percent against it if this were the live patch, but it's not. Yeah. You, not even all backers just got access to the PTU yesterday, and it's going to go live tomorrow. Um, so, um, what it, when is it on the PTU? What? Um... A few weeks, a month at most, I, and yeah, it's like... Yeah, I'm sorry you have to wait, like, a couple days? Yeah, you've waited this long in the project, and now a month is too much. Wouldn't you... Look, like, look, this month just send, there's... Just do what a normal Creed. person does and there's send death threats stats. to the developer. There's Call of Duty. Go play one of the million other things and just wait it's, a week. It just sounds. It just sounds like entitlement to me, man. It's just like I get that you paid for the thing, but it's not finished yet. I, don't... I paid for my thirty eighty in that EVG. I haven't even fucking made one yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I paid for my freelancer, and it's still not good. Yeah. And hey, listen, I'm all about ragging on CIG for for things that they do. This is not one of them. This is not one of them. This is this is about as standard for the industry as it gets. Yep. In fact, it's better than what it normally is. But it is also completely understandable if you're completely unaware of the situation. And it's true. It would be if if I had no idea what video off, games... But... If I had no idea what video games were or how economics works at yeah. all, and in to be fair, to be fair, um, <laughs> not everyone is like us and watching every single bit of development. Not every one of us hangs around on Spectrum. I can't. I don't hang around on Spectrum. Those people should not play this game right now. <laughs> that, that's actually true. To be yeah. honest. Yeah. Uh, okay. Let's move on. Mr. Square Peg asks. We've actually we've only got ten minutes. Ten, no. No. Sorry, five thirty. Yeah, sorry, I I can never remember what time we do this now. Uh, Mister Squarepeg asks, "What are your thoughts on the Idris coming in the next patch?" Uh, it's floating around. So, like, I mean, owners of the Idris don't get it, but there's there's going to be an Idris. It's it's the five star crime stat is what it is. When you hit five stars in GTA and they send the army after you, that's what this is. So they needed a big ship for that because man, they realize that pe that players have access to some powerful weaponry right now. So they needed something more powerful that could <laughs> that could realistically take them down if they needed to. Um, so like like if a player is rolling around in a hammerhead like murdering people, there needs to be a response to that in the game. So them throwing the interest in there to just railgun him to death. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, this is this is the evolution of the uh, the justice system that they've been working on. So, uh, Mr. Squarepeg also asks, will the Idris in the next patch have an interior? Uh, yeah. No, I don't no. think so. You, I don't think you can actually go on it in any way, shape, or form. That would suck. That's half the point. No, it's it's literally just like the big UEE gun that is keeping the peace. Yeah, not but putting but, the Idris in. 
But this Jake, is, in your oh, explanation about GTA, that's how you get tanks. You drive the crime level up to five, and then yeah. you kill the people in the tank in and steal their tank. Polished <laughs> GTA, yes. And soon, Star Citizen will let you do the same thing. However, <laughs> we're not there yet. I mean, I, I can see it being possible because they have done Terrier. But, yeah, like, as I think but, Shady but Phase has said, there's not gonna be putting that in is going to crank, is going to tank the server. So maybe it is just a shell? And they put it in there because otherwise, yeah, that's a lot of shit for the stream to, for the server to handle. Sucks. But uh, someone's going to try and board that bad boy, and you know it. And then we'll oh, find course. out. Well, I mean, the first thing that's going to happen is they're just, they're going to try and destroy it. How many sh how many yeah. hammerheads do you have to get together to to take out the Idris? Uh, it was like three or four, I want to say. It's going to happen. It's going to happen it like day happened. one. In, in Invictus week, remember? Oh, yeah. I took it down. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Uh, salvage Sam asks, uh, will there ever be salvage? Yes. Yeah, uh, that's actually like on the docket for ne like first half of next year, I think. Um, They need the oh, new... Reclaimer. Um, they need like all the damage states to work so you can literally rip apart ships into chunks. That That is what I'm going to start getting a little more interested because I want to rip ships into chunks with people still in them. And, and here's the thing. This this is them adding economy nodes right now, right? Yeah. Like refining is coming in the next patch. Like these, these, are, these are big core gameplay things. Um... So mining's in. Um, the the next, I think they they they're prioritizing like, act like real player bounties, um, that you can post. So that'll be pretty cool. I'm I'm pretty excited for for refining just be, just for the economic implications of it. Um, I'm excited for it as one more, like tier zero, tier one, whatever, one more like implemented system. Every additional system of the game that gets implemented and works and then gets fine-tuned down the road still makes it a more complete game and steps us one, one chunk closer to, oh, hey, Star Citizen is playable and there's a complete loop and it's fun. Because right now, the, I mean, we're, like, we're right almost now there's a, there. we're, we're almost there, but mining is its own loop, right? But mining doesn't connect really to everything else. Once you've got mining and refining, those two connect to each other, right? You can sell raw ore right now. I, I know you can, but it's not the full, it's not the full yeah, circuit, he's, right? He's just saying what you can do is go mine, sell. The ore doesn't get put back into circulation into the system and get used to build stuff for instance um the so at the very least what what is affected is prices um so the the full like ai quanta part of it obviously isn't implemented yet but but you selling stuff does change prices based on commodities and things like that because you can't because right now you can just do pure commodity cargo runs with no missions. You can load up your freelancer with iron and take yeah. it to the other side of the system and sell it for a better price than what you paid for it. Um, so so th those are loops. Those are loops. The, what what fleshes out a game at the end of the day is loops that that actually Connect. talk to each other yeah um, that's what i'm that's what i'm saying like mining is its you, own you said it was a game like you want a gameplay loop and i'm saying they exist already they, they do but they're all self-contained loops right they don't really it's it's like a chain and you've got one link here and one link here and you need like there's there's links that connect them all so that they all form 
the chain, right? The... You want you want the loop to be what we have right now, and then that loop to plug into another loop that can then plug into another loop, and so it all becomes interconnected. Yeah, because I mean that's the promise of Star Citizen, right? It's the, it's the promise that uh, you're not that's just when the mining. Game's gonna be done. Yeah, yeah I know, <laughs> but but when they turn that on. But every additional loop that gets added is a step towards it being done because that's what we're looking for in star citizen the idea that your mining changes the, like that everything affects everything that's the promise and right now it doesn't right your mining is just you mining and if, like it doesn't doesn't it affects doesn't, the market so yeah, yeah it affects what do you the market, want but he, but he the market doesn't affect it. Affect the market, but not just the effect of uh, ore. He wants it to lock into, well, because Eris and his group of friends have gone and got a load of iron, this has had a knock-on effect to make um, buying an Aurora cheaper because he has an, a large amount of all, um, iron ore and it's used in the construction of ore. Of ore. Yeah. Oh, fuck, you know. But what I'm saying is you don't want <laughs> Word the is gameplay hard. loop, you want the video game. Yes, I, I want the game. I don't want individual loops. I want yes. the game. I just want you to be clear there. <laughs> uh, okay. You don't want gameplay loops. You want the game. Mr. Squarepeg asks, uh, what are your thoughts on avocados on toast? Uh, no. I don't like All avocado. Right. I'm not a huge avocado guy either, so. I fucking hate avocado. I like a good spicy guacamole, though. It's got to be hot. Real hot. It's like it's just a creamy, thick salsa. You barely. I like avocado uh, is a vessel to carry the peppers and onions and spices. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't like avocado as a vessel. I just, it's not, it's not for me. And they go, they like they're ripe and then they're rotten. Like there's, yeah, they there's like a instantly bad, instantly bad, like so quickly. It's it. They're hard to work with. Fucking hate cucumbers too. Yeah. No. I like cheese like dirty dishwater. I like deep fried cucumbers. I mean, anything deep fried is acceptable. Yeah. Like that's I fried just fried pickle chips though. Oh. 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 <laughs> to like a hamburger slice of pickle, you know. I don't like pickles. Deep Hate pickles. Fried. Totally Hate hamburger. pickles. What's wrong with you? Oh, uh, what do you got, Shiver? There's only one good type of pickle, and it's a gherkin. Oh, it's a good-looking burger. It's a good-looking burger. That's a good-looking bird. Oh man, I actually That's made the best. Nice and full. I I made the best burgers I've ever had in my entire life last week. They were just amazing. What I did was I took like uh you know like crispy onion bits, like deep fried onion bits that you dribble on top of burgers sometimes. Well, I crumbled them up into the beef patty with egg and cheese, and that was the beef patties that got barbecued. Oh, they were I'm the kind just... of guy that will slice an onion into, like, discs, you know? Yeah. Not rings. Discs, yeah, discs. I know. And I will take a whole disc... And put it on my burger. Yeah. Just. I like I'm hungry. a lot. Uh, I want a burger. Mud... Yeah, I could go for a burger. Mud Trucker asks, uh, do you follow leeks? And what are your thoughts on leeks? Uh, they go really well in uh, potato, uh, cream of yeah. potato and leek soup. I like the big leek that Farfetch'd holds. Yeah, that's, month. yeah. It's a cute leek. Yeah. They also make really fun weapons, like to, to just bonk someone on the head with a leak. Yeah. yeah. If I find one, I, I, I look into it usually. You look into I'm leaks. Take questions seriously. We, we <laughs> have a uh, we have a policy at Relay to not discuss leaks, um, because there's, I mean. The the policy came about actually at the Red One. Yeah. Uh, the Amazon leak. That Amazon leak, because a ton of stuff was leaked, and we sat there going, like, 
none of this matters because 90% of it is going to change by the time any of this is out and everyone was like oh, oh. Yeah. The, the, the the guy the development in development is so fluid video game development is so fluid that literally yeah. none of that like it's very possible that nothing from that leak exists in the game anymore yep so it like there, there's no point in talking about it because if CIG isn't ready to talk about it, that means it is subject to change. Um, and and even the stuff that CIG does talk about is also subject to change because that's the nature of video game development. This is not a TV show where we have the ending leaked, right? Yeah. Like it, it's it's a and it's also a if anyone software. If anyone's out there leaking story stuff, uh, they can uh, they yeah. can deep throat a cucumber. Like, Didn't the what satisfaction do you get before? out of that? Probably. By Jared? What? By Jared? Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, we don't like leaks. Um, yep. Mr. Squarepeg asks, uh, Squadron 42 when, Jake? Wow. <laughs> Sweet. Uh, Mr. Squarepeg also day, asks... It, it's going to come out on the same day as your either your most or your second most, if Squadron 42 is your most, most anticipated game, and you're going to have to decide. That's, what I, that's my prediction. Well, it's not coming out uh, December, whatever, of Cyberpunk, so... Yeah, well, who knows what games will exist by the time Star <laughs> In fairness, Fable. Squadron 42 Jake's, comes out. Jake is right, because Bloodlines 2 hasn't got an official date yet. It's true. Squadron 42 and Fable 4, 4? 4, 4, are going to come out on the same day, and I'm going to say, yeah, screw off Star Citizen, I got Fable. Miami, are you not aware of the the leak that happened? Yeah, it was I mean, a huge it's... leak in like 2016. It, was I, like... it wasn't like your typical leak where some disgruntled employee says, hey, hey, hey I've snuck this out and put it on Google Drive. Share the link, share the link, share the link. It, it was more, oh, bollocks. It was a, I pissed the wrong button. It was a huge accident, yeah. Yeah. And I think, didn't wasn't it because of a live stream there was some... Something that everyone saw a, in a live stream, and they were like, "Oh, let's have a look." And, and then yeah. he was like, "It was oh, open." Yeah, yeah. Jared took a took a picture of of Star Marine installing, basically, um, and it, the the AWS URL was in his browser, also just like above, and and people like con like it was blurry too, so they had to like reconstruct the image, but they got it. So, yeah. Uh, Mr. Squarepeg asks, is there a rough ETA on server meshing? No. <sighs> that's the big one. That That's like the game is done now feature. Yeah. Um, that's so, the like, so no, no, that's the, not. that's the hard one that like no games do. Yes, they do. Right. They're, they're just starting to. No, World of Warcraft has had server meshing for like eight years. Really? Yes. Yeah. Because because when Cataclysm happened and there was a mass exodus, uh, they had to mesh the servers in order for there to be a sustainable population oh. for the economy to survive. Right. I think Eve's I always had it. Eve, yeah, Eve has always had it. Uh, Elder okay. Scrolls Online has it right now. Um, it's it, yeah. I mean, it's just it's also so it's what games it's do when they're about to die, ways, isn't it? Yeah, but with, for CIG, they have to do it because if they don't, the world will be empty one hundred percent of the time. Yeah. So, yeah, um, they, they have to do it by necessity, not because they're like it's at the tail end of the game's life. And um, to be fair, said, they're doing it in a bit. That being said, World of Warcraft has doubled its uh, subscriber count in the last two years, so that's cool. <laughs> also, to be fair, Star Citizen is doing it a, in a bit more complex a game than 
World of Warcraft. But no, well, yeah, they're they're doing it. They're doing it for Star Citizen because at the scale of game they're making, they have to. Yeah. That's 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 the only reason why they're doing it. Uh, Mr. Square Peg the, asks. Their only other option is one big server, and that's a bad idea. <laughs> A little bit, yeah. For, for many reasons. <laughs> oh, that would be beautiful. Um, Mr. Square Peg asks, will stations be destroyable? Uh, I, there might be some eventually, but I think the, the resounding answer for that is no. Um, because... It would be like blowing up Orgrimmar, right? It would like it's it, it's a it's a fixed location that people use for navigation, and that that would suck if it just wasn't there anymore. Um, plus, I, I, especially if it's a station that is for refueling, that's a mechanic they must have. So, so no, I, I think for gameplay reasons, I, I don't think they're going to do that. And if they do, it'll be very specific. I mean, I, I can see it being potentially possible in theory but you know you, you're either going to get popped by advocacy beforehand or if you do manage to somehow blow it up the station will be rebuilt in a day or two because the yeah. exact reasons that jake said and so so which makes me say as well i don't think they're going to make them destructible i think they will make them damageable um, i i think you're gonna able to probably see I think you'll probably probably see two different types of stations. There will be stations like uh, pirate bases and such that have no, like, there. it's not worth people spawn, it's not where people refuel, that people will probably be able to destroy and clear that, like, sort of raid content almost of like you get enough people together you mount an attack on this base you destroy it you clear that system for a while of yeah. uh of of enemies right but then there's also going to probably be some way to um maybe destroy parts of stations like you can maybe uh destroy some of the landing pads you'll be able to damage certain aspects of it but like you'll never fully destroy like if it's somewhere people have to spawn if it's somewhere people it won't it will those won't be completely destroyable and and here's the thing mud trucker it's the 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 star citizen ga the milky way is not structured like the star wars galaxy you do have to keep that in mind um they did not expand from the core outwards because earth is not in the center of the milky way so um so how how it's kind of structured there there's not really an out there's not really like a wild space type zone there's vandal territory there's where the banu are at there's isolated systems that maybe don't have a uh, good jump point lanes traveling through them that that are kind of pockets of nothing um but like it, it I, there, there's not really a scenario like what you're describing, unfortunately. It's more like Star Trek space. Yes, Everywhere where it's got everything's territory. populated. Everything has has stuff around, and and you find you find small systems that have like budding civilizations in it. They there's like there's not a lot there because like it, it was well, it's because because all all ascent like long distance travel is dependent entirely on jump points. Yeah. Right. So, so you you can jump to where a jump point goes. That's it. So that doesn't mean it doesn't mean like like no we're here in Seoul. If there's no jump point to Alpha Centauri, we're we are all citizens of Seoul. If there is no jump point to Alpha Centauri, we're not going to colonize Alpha Centauri. We'll colonize something beyond it because that's where we can jump to, right? So yeah. there is no, no... There's no there's no true faster than light travel in yeah. this game. So um, because jump points, you're not traveling faster than light. You're taking a shortcut. 
You're bending the paper and going right through it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that movie was bad. The book is great. The movie was bad. I literally don't even remember what movie that is. Um, A Wrinkle in Time. Oh, okay. I didn't watch the movie. The book was bad. phenomenal. Yes. The book is great. The movie was terrible. Um... Uh, okay, Mr. Oh, oh, it was also in. They use the same thing for um, in Interstellar. Yeah, they talk about how gravity works. They've they've used that in a couple of things. Yeah, for... uh, Event Horizon did it, but A Wrinkle in Time did it first. That that book is very old. Yeah, still no Expanse, Miami. Um, and, and actually, it's it's not. It, actually, no, it's, never mind. I remember that incorrectly. In A Wrinkle in Time, it's a string with an ant traveling across it. And they are yeah brought the together ends of the string together. Have you ever seen the movie Primer? No. Oh, that messes with your head. Basically, these people invent a box, and the box was designed to make things lighter, but they accidentally invent a time travel machine. All right, as you do. Well, yeah, it's a weird one. I think it was an independent movie, and that that that's the same sort of basis behind their time travel box is you're removing yourself from a point in time and put, putting yourself back, back in another point of time yeah physics is weird internet posts i saw a few years ago from a john Titor. you don't know john Titor. oh man work on your internet history it was a phenomenon <laughs> Uh, okay, Mr. Squarepeg asks, what is CIG actively working on right now in terms of server tech? Does anyone know? Server meshing. Server meshing and iCache. Yeah, there you go. I mean, server meshing is the big one. Yeah, um, they need, they definitely need iCache as well, because that'll that'll literally optimize the entire game for them yeah um and it allows it allows like the um it allows the 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 thing that chris roberts describes where you can put a cup down on a planet leave that planet and then someone else could come to that exact position and find that cup there thing um, is the game could survive without that that's that's it lovely could, it could yeah, otherwise but there's it's gonna be stuff cups, that they want to do that yes. won't work without it. But does it but they, the copy? game doesn't work without server meshing. It's it's like um back when they went god, how many years ago was it now? Like six years ago when they uh were working on sixty four bit moving from thirty two bit floating point unit. Yeah, when they moved like that at the time was the the, the game doesn't work if they can't get this to work, right? Now it's server meshing. If they don't get server meshing to work, the game doesn't work. Um, I mean, the the sixty four what the sixty four bit FPU was to have particularly large play areas that you were in at the times and have it accurate, dis accurate um, location distancing. Yeah. Because the thirty two bit Integra floated off after a certain amount of space and you couldn't have that. So now that they've got this particularly large play area that someone can be in, they need to then put it so that the servers can have these different locations and then link the server locations that are already massive together and so on and so on. And so the Russian doll thing. Yeah. I always thought they should just make everything smaller. Uh, there are games that do that. Star Trek Online does that. <laughs> when you Quite go into... Exist, yeah. David. Mm -hmm. I mean... If you're in space, what, even though everything looks at this spectacular scale, just make it really tight. There was tiny. an error during the beta. You would actually beam down to the planets for the ground bit as your ship, and your ship was a tiny little thing. Yeah. Compared to you as a person, and it's like, yeah, yeah, it, it, yeah, it it works. <laughs> Technically. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, Mud Trucker asks, "Do you think refineries will actually allow crafting of different alloys, or will be will there be separate forge decks?" Yes, they said that crafting is coming, but not in three twelve. But yes, yes. 
And Mud Trucker, al Mud Trucker also asks, uh, if you build on, a time machine... Okay, hang sorry. On. So you could say they're building the tech for the building tech. Yes! <laughs> yes! Ah, I don't like that one. Uh, Mud Trucker asks, if you built a time machine and went back six months, would, will you find yourself in space as the planet would be on the other side of the sun? Uh, it depends on your time machine. If your time machine can also manipulate space, no. That's a yes. detail question. <laughs> It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because we all know space doesn't exist. Finland doesn't exist. And I've just been informed yesterday, Australia doesn't exist either. Uh, well, that no, Austra me. Australia exists either. Australia actually exists. It's just there are no independent people there. Uh, what happens when you land in Australia is you are immediately... Uh, you have a spider inserted into you that lives on top of your brain and controls you. Uh, all humans living in Australia are actually controlled by the spiders of Australia. And the Australians that you see outside of the country exist solely to lure more people to Australia to be uh, in, to have spiders inserted into them. That's more realistic than the Australian doesn't exist theory that I heard. <laughs> Australia doesn't exist and anyone who thinks they're Australian are actually NASA employees just in on it what? alright <laughs> I like that one. Oh, can I also say I really didn't like the spiders in that Mandalorian episode oh they're big they got big long mouths dude I, didn't, I don't like I didn't know mouths. And like their bodies are vertical. Yeah. Ah uh, no. They're the same uh, spiders that were in the cave with uh, with Maul when they find him. Oh yeah, okay. Not the same planet, but the same. Species. Same spiders. Yeah, okay. I thought I had seen them before. Mm -hmm. You have. Yeah. This is my favorite part of Star Wars when they show us things we haven't seen in a long time, but we have seen before. They bring it all full circle, and it's my favorite. I, I do find it funny. I, I was thinking about it uh, while watching the episode today. I find it funny how significant Tatooine is, considering Tatooine is supposed to be nothing but, you know, a, a barren, out-of-the-way desert planet. It's, it's. I mean, it's not that insignificant. It's, uh, it's a huge hub for the Hut Cartel. So... There's a huge amount of business that goes through Tatooine. Yeah, it's just they, everything ends up on Tatooine. Everything. It's one of the... It's, like, maybe the largest, like, trade hub in the Outer Rim. So if you're in the Outer Rim, odds are you're probably <laughs> going to make your way there. It's a Force Nexus point. Oh, God. I hate the Force. Um, it is. Much like, like, Lethal and... And Dagobah and, and Ilum and other Ilums <laughs> doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> well, we have run out so of you're questions. Looking for, you're looking for the Force in Alderaan places. Next question, please. We've run out. <laughs> Oh, unfortunately, no. unfortunately, Shiver. we have ten more minutes of Shiver making Star Wars puns. Post the link. <laughs> Well, hey, I'm choked up about it. Push this button to ask questions. <laughs> it's Please. Just... Do, you, do you want me to leave it there, or do you want me to go farther? <laughs> oh. This is where it's at. At. <laughs> Babu frick. I like that one. Yep. Horrible. Uh, Mud Trucker asks. Horrible anymore. 
Muntrega asks, what are you reading right now? I'm, I'm reading a question from Muntrega. What do you got, Jake? Uh-oh. Something always go wrong when Jake leaves the seat. I'm reading I... Thrawn Ascendancy, which is the new Thrawn book. Oh, yeah. It's very good. This is book four. Hey, people out there who hate new Disney canon, uh, these Thrawn books are better than the old Thrawn books. Get wrecked. I'm not reading anything. Vampire the Masquerade. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna keep reading over it and the Star Trek core book. <laughs> yeah. Oh my uh my Cyberpunk core book's on its way. Nice. Yep. Oh yeah, speaking of, I also just finished reading this guy. The World of Cyberpunk 2077. God, I hope that's good. It's been so hyped up. It's going to be good. I I mean, it's not I don't I don't think it's going to be what everyone expects it to be and I think there are going to be a lot of people that are disappointed. I think it's going to oh, be good. Dude, you can't release a game and people aren't disappointed. Look at yes, The you can. Last of Us Part 2. Yes, you can. Katamari Damacy Impossible to, it was impossible for that. impossible to be disappointed in that game. But it wasn't hyped. That there's a difference there. Fair. Now for Portal me, 2. So there's a difference between like the meta like the world's hype and personal hype. For example, uh I personally am uh I am currently uh talking uh about bug snacks. <laughs> Uh, and I was so hyped for that game, and I got to a point where I'm like, man, I hope this isn't bad. <laughs> Turns out, it's the, uh, the modern Pokemon Snap that we all wanted, and, uh... But we're getting a modern Pokemon Snap. I know, but this is better than what I think that game's gonna be. I... You take pictures of the bugs, but then you catch them. And then you feed them to the residents of, of, of Snackville or whatever the town's called. Dude, okay, there's a there's a soda bug snack named Dr. Sody, Isn't that how and COVID I'm very started? happy. What? Isn't that how COVID started? Yes. Um, there's, uh, there's Shishka Bug. Uh, I, 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 I like... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, shiver. Okay, listen. This game was made for shiver. <laughs> Every bug's name is a pun. I'm gonna get a master list of bug snacks names right now. We, we did get a question. Names. We did get a question. That's pretty. Okay. Hold on. No, hold on. I'm just gonna do the highlights bugger? real quick. Oh wait. Real quick. Uh. Uh. Hold on. There's uh. <laughs> there's cinna snail. Uh. It is a cinnamon roll. That's unwound a little bit, and that front part's the snail. That's genius. Yeah. Uh, there's a crapple. It's a, Is it it's a crab, a crab apple? apple. It's a, it's an apple sliced, but it, in the shape of a crab. Um, there's uh, there's <laughs> there's a frider. It's it's a spider made of French fries. Um, there's, some of them are just, like, Pokemon names. Uh, there's, there's Mothza, which... Is it a <laughs> mozzarella a stick? Oh, it's a no, pizza. No, it's a pizza. Uh, that's a giant moth. Like, <laughs> Mothra-sized moth. There's, so, wait, Is no. It... <laughs> there's, there's a Mothza's, but then there's Mothza Supreme. Which is the, the big one. <laughs> is there um, a god larder? A massive dragon that's an enchilada. Oh, that'd be really good. There's a peel bug. So it's it's a it's a pill bug 
but it's an orange. So like, like, like when it, you know how pill bugs roll up in a ball, that ball is an orange. And then when it's crawling around on the ground, when it unfolds, it's just the slices of the orange just wiggling around. It's pretty good. Yep. It's pretty good. Uh, uh, praying uh, picantis is pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I want I want to get to harem. Uh, okay, harem. Yeah, go for it. So harem must know the answer. Asks when starts free free flight week ships expo and stuff. Uh, next week on the twentieth. There you go. Yep. I E E twenty nine fifty. So what's cool about this time? It's not one day each. It's two days. So every ship manufacturer, you have two days to try out those ships. Every single one of them. They overlap. So, so the, the first manufacturer gets the first two days. But on the second day, the second ship manufacturer comes in. So then you have access to both day one and day two. Then on day three, you have access to day two and day three, and et, et cetera. So I, I like, it's much better th this time, I feel. And it's also on Microtech. So... Uh... It's already set up. Go do that. You. Uh, we've got like three more minutes. So quickly, Jake, have you got anything going on? Uh, no. That you can talk uh, about. Hey, go, go. Yeah, there's things I can't talk about. <laughs> um, uh, I'm going to post in the chat because it's over now and I'm sad about it. And I think about it every day of my life. Uh the the wretched hive which is a tabletop rpg that i ran on the astro pubs channel uh in the star wars universe it is fantastic like in in no like i had nothing to do with how fantastic it was i simply gave our players the tools to make it good and they made it better than i could have ever hoped so it it was incredible um so um uh there we go there's wretched hive episode zero if you guys want to watch that um it, that's where we get into character introductions as well as we talk about the system so it's a good place to start but if you want to jump straight into the action episode one is where you want to start so um so that's up to you guys uh it's only 10 episodes long uh but it is awesome um, there is a, uh, there is a point in that series where they, um, Dukes of Hazard ramp a land speeder over a platoon of star, uh, star, uh, stormtroopers into a landing bay, crashing into more stormtroopers and murdering them. And then, and then it explodes and then they murder every, all the other stormtroopers in about five seconds. It's incredible, and that's not even close to the most insane thing that happens in that show. So uh, please go watch <laughs> The Wretched Hive. It's really good. Um, it has a lot of characters from The Mandalorian, so if you're watching that right now, um, some of those characters do show up in, in the series, um, and it's a grand old time. Um, we've got people like Dolvac and, and Paul and uh, Darionator and Atomic Zero being our players, so it's obviously going to be good. Um, Shiver, what you got? Um, we got something happening on Wednesday. It could be a Bloodlines playthrough. It could be a Phasmophobia playthrough. It could be just us pissing around. Uh, this time, well, this time, next week, about an hour, we've got another episode of Vampire the Masquerade. Uh, you might want to go and watch the last one because we actually had a player die. Ooh, nice. uh, we died. had some brilliant news in uh, uh, Noscavian. Really? <laughs> Uh, to bring back his I mean spoilers ahead we had a uh, Noscavian to bring back his dead wife his clan kidnapped Nitro's character's daughter to sacrifice her in order to bring back his wife and they were all like what the fuck are we going to do what the and I'm just sat there going this is fucking brilliant <laughs> and long story short someone died yeah. Uh, we've also had some good news in World of Darkness. Next month, for free, they're reintroducing some three of the clan favourites. Uh, Salubri, Ravnos, and my personal favourite, Zamitsi. So that's going to be good. Uh, uh, and I think two weeks' time, we've got Star Trek. Nice. 
Very nice. That episode's gonna be special for certain unnamed <laughs> reasons. All right. Well, Glory with that, to the founders. With that, we have reached the end of our show. Thank you, everyone, for hey, uh, jump on Discord, people. Discord.gg yeah. slash relay sc. It's where we usually hang out and we like it to talk is. about video games in space. So and uh, join us that. join us on Tuesday at nine nine p.m. Yeah, Eastern, right here, six, six p.m. Pacific. Uh, we're gonna do a little, probably a lot of talking about the new consoles, a lot of talking yep. about uh, I have Valhalla. Both. Yep, I have both the new consoles. I will tell you my impressions. Uh, the TLDR <laughs> is though, uh, this is the biggest best general, time to generational be a gamer. leap I've ever seen, ever. So, it's the greatest time to be a gamer. It's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We're out. Thank you so much, everyone. See you in the verse. Goodbye.